The circle of fifths, or the circle of fourths as it can be known, is a visual way of showing the relationship between the major and minor keys and their scales. It can also be a useful tool for beginners to learn how many sharps or flats are in a scale, or for intermediates when improvising or changing the key of a phrase or piece of music. I have the complete diagram shown here, which may look a bit complicated at first, but I will quickly unpack it and explain how it can be used. First let me start with a quick overview and then I will explain it in detail. The main ring has the names of the major keys and scales. Above this are the key signatures showing the sharps and flats within each key. Below are the names of the relative minor keys. On the outside it lists how many sharps or how many flats are in each key. An arrow shows that if you move around the circle in a clockwise direction, you will change the key or scale by a fifth whereas if you move around the circle in an anti-clockwise direction, then you will change the key or the scale by a fourth. At the top of the circle is C, because this key or scale has no sharps or flats. To create the relative minor, you simply play the same scale starting on the sixth note. So for example, if we take the scale of C and count six notes, that will lead us to A. Therefore the C major scale has a relative A minor scale, and because both of them have the same notes, they will both have the same key signature. So for each major key, there is also shown its relative minor underneath. Now starting with C and moving clockwise, the key changes by a fifth. So if we take the scale of C and count five notes, that will take us to G, which is the next key. This key has one sharp, F sharp. From here, we can continue going around the circle, starting now with the scale of G. If we count five notes, we will come to D, which is the next key. The key of D has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, and has changed the key by another fifth. We can continue in this fashion around the circle until we reach C sharp major and its relative minor, A sharp minor. Each time we move around the circle clockwise, the key changes by a fifth, and each time from C to C sharp major, it changes by adding another sharp to the scale. If we continue around the circle until we reach C again, the key will still continue to change by a fifth. But it's easier to explain the notation of the circle of fifths if we start again from C, but this time we move anticlockwise around the circle. So starting from C again, if we move anticlockwise, the key or scale changes by a fourth. So this time if we count four notes, that brings us to F, which is the next key. This key has one flat, B flat. Now we can start with the scale of F and count four notes. That brings us to B flat, which is the next key. This has two flats, B flat and E flat. We can continue around the circle in this fashion, adding flats until we reach C flat major and its relative minor, A flat minor. If we continue around the circle until we reach C again, the key and scale will continue to change by a fourth. So to recap, if we start anywhere on the circle with a major key or minor key and move around the circle clockwise, we change the key by a fifth. There is a pattern from C to C sharp major and its relative minors, shown in the addition of a sharp each time we move around. If we start anywhere on the circle and move anti-clockwise, we change the key by a fourth. The pattern from C to C flat major and its relative minors is the addition of a flat each time we move. We can use a circle of fifths to find out what are the flats and sharps in each key or scale. If we start on F and go clockwise, it gives the names of the sharps in the order. So if the scale or key has one sharp, then it's F sharp. If the scale or key has two sharps, then it's F sharp and C sharp, etc. If we start on B flat and move anti-clockwise, it gives us the flats in the order. So if the key or scale has one flat, then it's B flat. If the scale or key has two flats, then it's B flat and E flat, etc. The circle of fifths can also be used to find the triad chords and their types. For example, in the key of C, the triad chords built on the notes either side of C are major triads. The other chords are either minor or diminished. To find the triad chords built on the other keys, simply rotate the indicators. So for example, these are the triad chords built in the key of D. The triads either side of D are major triads and the rest of the chords are minor or diminished. The same is true for the minor keys. Just position the minor indicator in the middle of the minor key that we want to look at. So here the triad chords, either side of A minor, are minor triads, and the other chords are either major or diminished. 
We can also use the circle of fifths to find the notes of these triads. For example, to find the notes of the C major triad, simply follow the arrows and go down at an angle and then straight up, C, E, G. Rotate the arrows to find the other chords. For example, the notes of the G major triad would be G, B, D. To find the notes of the minor chords, we go straight up then down at an angle. So the notes of A minor are A, C, E. Again, simply rotate the arrows to find the notes of the other minor chords. So we can see at a glance the relationship between the keys and scales as they move in fifths or fourths. We can easily see what are the flats and sharps in each key and what are the notes and types of triad chords diatonically formed on the scale. So it can be helpful for the beginner if they have not yet learned their scales. When composing music, the keys that are next to each other are the keys that are different by one note. Maybe a sharp or flat is added or taken away. But either way, these are the keys that will be the easiest to use when changing the music from one key to another. Learning to improvise, the musician should have a good knowledge of chord tones. Here, the circle of fifths can be a guide when practicing. For example, the musician could start anywhere on the circle, use the names of the keys as dominant sevenths, and play the chord tones of each seventh as they go around the circle. They could also use the names of two of these keys next to each other and play them as a 2-5 progression around the circle or even three as a 2-5-1 progression. Or they could play a lick in one key then transpose it to the next key on the circle going round in fifths or fourths in an anti-clockwise direction. Using the circle in this way forces a musician to learn the chord tones of the seventh chords. So here are just some ways how the circle of fifth can be used as a visual aid to improve your playing.